Hi, welcome to the NAM series, The Misunderstanding of Multiplicity. I have a whole bunch of books to talk about today, and I won't lie and say it's going to be a short video, but I will try to cut to the point. Uh, I said I would come back and do part two of uh, the end of April. I the end of April. I talked about this book, Medical Muses, by Asti Hustafad. Hysterics in the 19th century uh, in Paris, and it is a wonderful book. And I know I talk about Australia's website a lot, which is a big, I call it the warehouse from all all experiences of multiplicity. Uh, I think they have a they have a lit a book list, but I'm not sure if they have this book on their list. But you can check. Um, I'm going to tell you about a few books that have come out. This is one book that I think everyone should read with. If you're, if you're having a contra conflict or internal thoughts about what multiplicity is or you want to get history and research on it, um, Creating Hysteria, Women and Multiple Personality by um, Joan Ayosella. The book I lost, I went ahead and reordered it at uh, Amazon and got it for $1.96. $25 book. In mint condition for $1.96. In two days it came to me. So, um, let me start from the beginning a little bit. So a lot of people think that, that Sybil, or Three Faces of Eve, was the beginning of multiple personality, but multiplicity has been around forever. Um, and and um, there's several other books I want to talk about that I don't want to forget. Um, and years ago, in the 1800s and the 19th century, people that are considered multiple or with DID now, and a whole other, a whole lot of other things, um, were, were kind of like talk, coined hysterics by Dr. Uh, by Dr. Uh, Jean Martin Chicot, who was kind of the founder of neurology, like a big father renowned uh, neuropsychiatrist uh, in, in Paris. And Paris was kind of the birthplace of neurology, and a lot of people came to study under him and study his patients. And he had a hysteria ward at the La Salpetier, which you can read about anywhere. And three three really kind of like, like I said before, spotlighted patients. Now, at the end, what a lot of neurologists said is, what really happened is the name hysteria became the laughing stock of neuropsychiatry. Um, so a lot of neurologists that came after Dr. Chicago wanted to apply a scientific meaning to why these women were behaving the way they were. And, you know, they just ran out on Dr. Chicago and said, okay, is he at best a shoddy scientist, at worst he's a charlatan, but um, we're going to find some kind of reason Augustine, Genevieve, and Blanche, and others are acting this way. So they reclassified these women with motor disorders, forms of epilepsy, and whatnot, and gave it, a, gave it validity by giving it a name. That's really important. Meanwhile, Dr. Morton Prince, who was also in Paris, who studied under Dr. Chicot, saw that hysteria was kind of being really poo-pooed as the laughing stock diagnosis. So he went about with his patient he had who, were, who was acting just like these women. He had a patient, we'll just call Mrs. Miss X, better known as Miss X or uh, Miss B. Chump. I'm saying her name wrong, probably B. Chump. <laughs> who, who lived a wonderful life, had many friends and family and, and functioned, and then all of a sudden she would just go off in these different states. 
and behavior. And he was convinced that that she was a, a multiple. She had multiple personalities. So he wrote this book. At first, he looked at it as the disintegration of a personality because people would regress to being children and play act and like do like imitate and couldn't quite understand why that was happening. So the the paper he presented, case study paper he presented in 1900 to Paris Psychiatry Congress was uh, the problem with multiple personality. And he goes ahead and he says, basically, is it hysteria like Dr. Chicago said? Or is it sleep deprivation? Is it an alteration of character? Is it multiple personality? Or is it uh, an, an abnormality of neurological uh, bunk, uh, electricity in your brain? And he just he looked at everything it could possibly be. And his entire book is about this. The interesting thing is that Dr. Cornelia Wilbur was a follower of his. Just like doctors have a model or a person they a model they follow. And we can go to the internet and get research on a doctor before we go to them to find out what their specialty is. Sybil, aka Sybil Dorset, the late Shirley Ardell Mason, in the late 1940s, um, when she was referred to Dr. Cornelia Wilbur by her roommate, uh, went and read up on her and saw that she was a follower of Dr. Morton Prince and that. Uh, she named his works here in this book as material she was interested in. So, the disassociation of the personality. Now, along comes Debbie Nathan and Sybil Exposed, and she said, well, well, Shirley Ardell Mason read this book ten years previous and then presented as such to Shirley, or to Dr. Cornelia Wilbur, uh, the second time she went to see her and was diagnosed multiple, and then read it again. Um, okay, that could be, and that could have happened. And she may have, and she even read up on Three Faces of Eve, Christine Costner Seesmore, and she even went further back and read in the medical journals. So maybe she did. But my thought is the late Shirley Ardell Mason was more than likely multiple, but she wasn't the multiple we see in Floretta Schreiber's book, Sybil, and she wasn't at all multiple like we saw in the movie and like we see in the United States of Terra. And, you know, even if they add a little bit of right terminology in there or kind of some experiences that get it close, um, it, it still went off the deep end there. Now, um, I think she was probably somewhere in between, and you'd have to read, I really, one thing I suggest when I'm comparison reading is to read uh, Christine Costner Seesmore's book, A Mind of My Own, and uh, where she talks about how she was not integrated, like in the movie, there were many more personalities or people in her system or alters. And uh, she didn't have any trauma in her past. Uh, and then, then get the book Diagnosing Multiple Personality by Dr. Bennett Braun, Frank Putman, and Richard Clough. And you, you'll see that they pick up where, where Sybil leaves off and where Dr. Martin Prince leaves off and Dr. Cornelia Wilbur leaves off, and they apply a meaning to something that may not be um, the, the purpose. Now, if you read that with, after Sybil, the book that came out by Nancy Preston, Shirley Ardell Mason's good friend who has been working on her book forever, which I couldn't wait to get, and it's a wonderful book. Uh, 
and then pair that up against uh, or along with uh, Dr. Patrick Sirachi's book, uh, Sybil in Her Own Words, I do really believe that Shirley was multiple, but not at all like we see in the media, not at all like what psychiatry has told their students and patients that they are. And in order to really, really delve into that a little deeper, you would have to then, pardon me, dropping things, look at this book, which I know a lot of people found comfort in this in recovery, but in the 80s, you couldn't go to a therapist office, a survivor group, without this book, The Courage to Heal, on every shelf. And if you signed up for a survivor course or a recovery workshop, or anything where they were speaking, we had to buy the book, and then they had conferences, they had seminars, they had retreats, they had affirmation books, they had workbooks, and in essence, this book talks about going in search of memories and how you find out if you were abused, and also going in search of multiples, of alters, and how to look for them, okay? Now, after this book came out, was really big, uh, and all that, Creating Hysteria came out and talked about the false memory syndrome association. There's a timeline that's really important here. And how all of that led to a lot of overdiagnosing of multiple personality, but when they changed the name to DID, disassociative, it slacked off. And doctors weren't going back and talking about memories, doing abuse work. They weren't doing trauma work. Because there were so many lawsuits that um, they didn't continue on with that. that in fact, they said it's no such thing. Most important, the book that I always go back to is When Rabbit Howls by Trudy Chase and the Troops. If you compare all those books and you don't read Trudy Chase, When Rabbit Howls, you will only see the making of a disorder. When you read Trudy Chase, when Rabbit Howls from the troops, it, Trudy was the first with a group to write their own book, to choose not to be integrated, and to choose not to be disordered, and to go on and function, and stay together. And I will forever be gracious to them. Um, I wanted to mention that uh, there's another book I'm reading right now, um, Which One Am I, it's called, um, and a wonderful book that looks at culture and um, culture, church, the, the geography of where a person lived, family secrets, family, how family reacted to things and how you learned in your environment and um, to the development of a multiple system, how a person becomes multiple. And I'm going to do a separate video on that because I'm right in the thick of that book. But what I wanted to really say is just if ever you should find yourself feeling like you're in the middle of the, conspir the, the controversy of it all and trying to understand it all, Medical Muses with Creating Hysteria, with the Disassociation of Personality, with Sybil Exposed really kind of puts it all together in a way that is quite amazing. And uh, then if you really look closely at what this book is teaching here and what everyone was hearing in the 80s and 90s, then um, it even helps even more to understand why I say I don't believe in multiple personality the way it has been um, sold to us. Thank you.